Hey guys, it's Josh with Update Channel, and today what we're going to be discussing is what exactly happens when you crank your engine. I mean, to most people, you turn the key, the engine starts, and you go. That's it. But if you ever actually wanted to think about it from beginning to end, all the processes that it actually takes to get that engine from cold and not moving to running and hot, this is the video for you. So what you need to understand here is that our object here is to get the engine from not running to running. And to do that, we need to look at each process, each system by itself. Now, there's a lot of questions related to this as far as, well, what engine are you referring to? I mean, there are jet engines, gasoline engines, diesel engines, rotary engines, motorcycle engines, all sorts of different engines. I'm gonna pick the CAT C15 diesel engine because I'm the most familiar with it and for a long time it was one of the most popular diesel engines in production for large trucks. Now there's gonna be a lot of scientific principles in discussion here. One of the major ones is objects in motion tend to stay in motion and objects at rest tend to stay at rest. This is Isaac Newton's law of motion. Now, that is a problem for our discussion here because the engine's not moving. So it's going to want to not stay moving. We have to get it to move. And in order to do that, you have to have a lot of inputs into it to get it started. And a lot of energy has to be applied to the engine itself in order to get it there. Also, engines don't like cold and they don't like not moving. They like to be hot and they like momentum. So we have to give it both of those also. So talking about the systems, and we'll start from what I consider to be the least, and we'll work our way up to the greatest or the most complicated systems in order to get the engine started. So the first thing or system we should look at is, and that's your cooling system. Of course, it's a complicated system. It's filled with coolant. It's got thermostats, water pump, coolant lines, coolant hoses, but when it comes to getting the engine started, it doesn't really do anything to get it started. I mean, its system is primarily there to keep the engine temperature at a reasonable temperature under boiling and to help cool the engine off. The engine's already going to be cool because it hasn't been running, so the engine should be ambient temperature already, and we want to get it hotter. The only thing that the cooling system really could do to help with starting the engine would be if you're using any sort of block heater or system that's heating the coolant outside of the engine to get it warmer. That can actually help it start, but the cooling system by itself doesn't really have anything to do with it. Now, the next system we're gonna discuss is your lubrication system, the engine oil system. All engines have it, and while it is very important, it doesn't really do anything while the engine is starting, for the most part. Extended cranking, you will get oil pressure and it'll provide oil to all of the critical parts of the engine that need oil, such as the bearings and your crankshaft, your camshaft, the cylinder walls. But for the most part, an engine, as long as it has some oil on it, and even with no oil pressure, will have enough oil to provide a smooth cranking process. There are engines that are off for weeks or months. You can crank them. It might take a few seconds for oil pressure to build but they can still start fine without them needing the oil system to really kick in and do anything. Now, probably the main exception to that would be a Huey engine. And if you don't aren't familiar with Huey engines, this is a fuel system that International and Caterpillar developed that basically uses high pressure engine oil to fire the injectors. So if you had no oil, your oil system wasn't doing anything, the engine with, if with the Huey engine wouldn't start. But since we're mostly gonna be discussing the C15 here, doesn't really tie in with that system. So your oil system doesn't have a lot to do with the engine starting. Now this ties into the two major systems that we have left that we really need to come together in order for this engine to start. If either of these systems isn't working, that engine is not gonna start. <laughs> Now you might say that the mechanical system is a system in itself. What we're talking about here is the camshaft and the crankshaft and the pistons, but we're gonna kind of look at it as a, in a holistic view in relation to the fuel system and the electrical system. Because you could talk about cylinders by themselves or the intake and exhaust system, but really wanna focus on the fuel and electrical system and how they tie in to start that engine. So let's start 
out of those two, the electrical and fuel system. We'll start with the fuel system. Now, like I said, we're start focusing on the C15 here, but the fuel system is critical to get that engine started. In the beginning of this video, I said we had to add energy to get the engine started. Now you might say, well, engines produce power. Nothing, nothing truly produces power. It's merely converted or moved around. So fuel is added, fuel is energy to the engine to get it started. So you have to have fuel in the engine, but the fuel by itself does not start the engine. You have to inject that fuel with cylinder pressure and heat at the exact right time for that engine to run, for it to produce the explosion, the combustion process that pushes the piston down. But that combustion is not actually what gets the engine moving in the first place. And there's a lot to that combustion process in and of itself, which we're not gonna discuss all of here, but the ECM, the electronic control module, tells the injectors when to fire, but it actually can't force them to fire whenever it wants to because this is what they call an electronic unit injector fuel system. An electronic unit injector fuel system, while ECM controlled as far as how much fuel and when to fire, doesn't produce the pressure that forces the fuel to be sprayed into the cylinder. So what produces that pressure is the inside the injector. It's actually actuated with a rocker arm, kind of like the intake and exhaust valves, but the camshaft moves the rocker arm to force fuel pressure inside the injector, and then the, the ECM itself tells it when to fire. So the engine just sitting there not moving is not gonna have any fuel pressure at all. Now I might be saying, well, Josh, don't some engines have priming pumps that build fuel pressure with just turning the key without cranking? Yes, some do. Some have what they call a lift pump. Some people call them a transfer pump. Generally, they're called a lift pump. This is more of a priming pump. All it does is push fuel to the injectors. It doesn't make the thousands of PSI required to fire the injector. So let's theoretically say, say that you could produce that fuel pressure though, that the injector without the engine cranking over could produce thousands of PSI of pressure, then the ECM could fire it. So at that point, you would have very high pressure fuel being sprayed into the cylinder, but would that start the engine? No, no, it wouldn't for a variety of reasons. First off, that injector process has to be done at the exact right moment when the piston is at top dead center of the combustion stroke or the compression stroke, I should say. So all of the air in the cylinder has to be compressed very quickly and then the fuel is injected. Not only that, this is a diesel engine, doesn't have a spark plug. This is what they call a compression ignition engine. So the air being forced together quickly will produce a lot of heat. All the heat in the air is compressed as well as the air itself. That produces a very high temperature inside the cylinder even before the fuel's injected. So if the fuel was just injected with the cylinder sitting there stationary, it would not do anything other than just spray fuel into the cylinder. You have to have the whole system moving. That piston has to be moving to get all the air in there at the right time and at the right temperature. Then, it, then that fuel system can inject the fuel and ignite and start this whole process going. So now we're gonna be talking about the most complicated system to get this engine started, but one that is vital. That is the electrical system. We talked a little bit about the engine control module and how it tells the injectors when to fire. That's a very important part because on a C15, a CAT diesel engine, it has to be there or the injectors aren't gonna fire. This is not a strictly mechanical engine. Now, there are strictly mechanical diesel engines that don't have a computer. They will fire without any electrical input. Now, you might be saying, well, could you run an engine without any electrical input, not even an electric starter, which we'll be discussing here shortly? Yes, you can. They have air starters, or I used to, when I was a teenager, I had an old tractor called a Farmall Super A. It actually had a hand crank on the front of the engine that you could start it with. It also had an electric starter, but it didn't need a starter to rotate the engine to get it firing. So yes, some engines, you don't need electricity at all to get them started. However, 
this engine. You do. So when you turn that key to on, not crank, on, you are providing electrical input to that ECM, that control module, on a CAT engine, particularly pin number 70. And that wakes up the computer. The computer says, we're awake. Hopefully the computer's not thinking, I am alive also, but that would be a whole different set of problems. Anyway, the computer is now awake. It's looking for certain things immediately. It's looking at the coolant temperature. It's looking for engine speed. It's looking at oil pressure. It's looking at fuel temperature, boost pressure. Basically, all the sensors that tell the ECM what's going on, it's analyzing all of them. If you're not cracking, it's not going to be trying to fire the engine. It's really just making sure nothing weird is going on. Now, it's really when you turn the key to the crank cycle, that's when stuff starts taking off. Because that engine ECM is just sitting there. It's not doing a thing other than analyzing the inputs it's getting and maybe checking a few solenoids initially. But after that, it's just sitting there. It's waiting to see something. And what it's waiting to see is engine speed. That is when the magic starts happening, folks. It sees engine speed. Once it sees engine speed, it's trying to fire the injectors. Now, what if there's no fuel in the tanks? What if the air filter is so plugged that there's no air getting inside the engine? Or what if all the piston rings have disintegrated? It doesn't care. The ECM doesn't know any of those things. On a C-15, it doesn't have a fuel pressure sensor. It doesn't have an air restrictions gauge that's read by it. It has no way of monitoring cylinder pressure. So it sees engine speed, folks. It's firing the injectors. Hopefully, the engine starts. Now that all leads up to the engine was rotating. Why was it rotating? If you've ever tried to rotate an engine by hand, you know it's quite difficult to do. The engines aren't just gonna rotate by themselves or start by themselves. So even though everything on the engine, we've got plenty of fuel pressure, the injectors are firing, it's got cylinder pressure, the ECM's working, reading all the sensors, you have to be rotating the engine. Without rotating the engine, nothing, none of these processes matter. You can't start the engine without rotating it by an external force. And what that external force is, is called a starter. And pretty much exclusively now we use electric starters. And what the starter does is it's basically an electric motor that produces a tremendous amount of torque. It pulls a tremendous amount of current, amps also. So you have to have a lot of battery power. You have to have, generally diesel engines have more than one battery unless they're a small one. But a C15 like this is probably gonna have three or four large truck batteries to get that engine moving because it takes a lot of current to get the engine cranking usually trucks have a lot of batteries for that reason just for the starting of the engine once the engine started you don't really need four batteries it doesn't it's not like trucks take a tremendous amount of current to operate but to get that engine started they might need all of that battery power so how does the starter work well while you're cranking you're sending voltage to the ECM, but you're also sending it, usually through a relay, to the starter itself. Most trucks are 12 volt, although a lot of equipment is 24 volt. Some older vehicles were six volt, but mostly everything is 12 volt nowadays. So you're sending a 12 volt signal to the starter to rotate, to energize. And what that starter does is it kicks out a little gear and that gear engages with the flywheel and the flywheel, well, unless it has an automatic transmission, then it'll have a torque converter, but the flywheel then engages and the starter is actually turning the engine. So you're using stored energy inside the batteries to rotate the engine. And that's how you're turning that engine over is with the starter. No starter, no starting. And once the engine is rotating, then all of those other processes, the ECM, the injectors, the firing, the cylinder pressure, the fuel injection, all of that can take place and hopefully start your engine. Now, are there other principles at work here, folks? Of course, you could literally spend hours or days talking about everything involved in the starting of that engine. But for the most part, these are the systems. This is the 
nature of what is going on when you turn that key to start that engine. Hopefully you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching.